Hey guys, I am back with my second makeover, this tall Virginia made lane cedar chest. I found this piece at our local thrift store for $70, which is a little higher than I probably should have spent on it, but I personally love cedar chests, so I couldn't pass it up. And it was in great shape too, so I knew that this would be a great piece for a newbie like me. Right when we got home, I unscrewed the lock on the top. Lane has a recall on these locks because of kids getting locked in the chests, and with kids in our house, that had to go. Next, I removed the old hardware and cleaned the chest with some crud cutter. Then I filled the extra hardware holes and a minor gouge with quick wood. While the quick wood dried, Natalie removed what was left of some old velvet drawer liner. While Natalie stood back and watched me do most of this project, I did ask for her advice a lot. This was definitely one of those times. She sprayed water on the velvet and used a razor blade and a rag to remove the felt. She had removed velvet from drawers before by saturating the velvet with warm water and it came up pretty easily. But this drawer had an MDF bottom so we didn't want to saturate it or it would have gotten damaged. Because of that, we weren't able to get all of the velvet up, but it looks a lot better than it did before. Then I taped off everywhere that I didn't want paint to get. Once the quick wood was dry, we sanded it down with 220 grit sandpaper, and then there were some drips in the old top coat that I sanded down as well. Finally, I mixed Heirloom Traditions all-in-one paint in the color Iron Gate and then poured it through a paint filter into the paint sprayer. I also mixed 20% water to thin the paint so it would create a less textured finish. Before I sprayed the cedar chest, I double checked the settings and once I got it to where it looked good, I sprayed the first coat. At first, I was nervous because it looked like there was going to be a lot of texture, but when it dried, it leveled out and it looked really good. I'm seeing why Natalie has grown to love this paint. Then we uncovered the base to see if we liked the contrast of the wood on the bottom with the black. And Natalie convinced me that the wood was a little too orangey so we were gonna have to do something about that after we painted. With the first coat of paint on, we could see a few problems that we couldn't see before. We had to fill in a scratch with some wood filler and the paint was a different sheen in a few spots. So I mixed some of this gray tinted 123 primer with a little bit of water and brushed it onto the spots that had a different sheen in hopes that it would create an even looking finish. When that was all dry, I sanded those spots smooth and I cleaned all the dust off again. The second coat went on just as good as the first coat and it looked so good again. But I could see the primer still, so I sprayed another coat and crossed my fingers that it would cover those spots up. And guess what? It finally worked. So we moved on and screwed these new knobs on. And of course, the last piece of hardware slipped out of my hands and scuffed the paint. Natalie tried rubbing it out and it kind of disappeared, so I moved on to the base. I lightly scuff sanded with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I used a lint free rag to wipe some General Finishes Java gel stain onto the wood. I let the gel stain sit for about 30 seconds and then wiped it back off with a clean lint free rag.
Five days later, after plenty of time for the stain to dry, I wiped on three coats of water-based polyurethane, letting it dry between each coat. And in typical Taylor fashion, I found a way to create more work for myself on the very last coat of poly. Yup, I got some poly on the paint. So there was a big smear of poly that was a different sheen than everything else. I was getting a little flustered at this point, but Natalie gave it to me straight and reminded me that I was just gonna have to paint another coat, or else it would be easy to see the touch up. So we covered the base up and sprayed the sides, and the front to cover up where I scuffed it with the knob earlier. Before I share what the cedar chest looks like now, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps us out and we really appreciate it. Okay, so here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. Even though I ended up creating more work for myself with some of the mistakes I made, I think it turned out great. I personally love the stained wood base with the contrast of the black paint, but maybe that's just me. Would you have painted the base black to match the rest of it, or left it wood like me? I know which one Natalie would have picked. Alright, that's it for now. See you next time.